ancient agora. Just invoking the words conjures iconic images of human history. Like the Colosseum or the pyramids, it's one of the great sights of the ancient world to behold. On this very ground at the foot of the Acropolis nearly 3,000 years ago, men we know of to this day spent their days teaching, learning, and laying the philosophical and political foundations of the modern world. This is where Socrates taught his students to learn by asking them questions. And where a young playwright named Aristocles heard him speak, walked home, burned all of his plays, and spent the rest of his life learning and teaching philosophy under his new name, Plato. Some see it as the birthplace of democracy, and it's likely that on a warm August evening much like this one 2,500 years ago, Plato and Socrates walked along this very path. Well, just knowing how much I enjoy a view, I can imagine you know who spent time up here as well. Of course, I'm talking about Socrates, I'm talking about Plato. They spent a good amount of their time here at the Agora teaching and speaking and just discussing issues of the day. And sitting on this hill overlooking the whole thing, I can just imagine that a couple thousand years ago, he was up here eating an apple and doing the same thing. I mean, the history here, if you're open to it, really just seeps out of the ground and sort of pulls you in. Well, it's hard to describe what it's like walking around and breathing the same air that Socrates breathed. It's easy here to find a quiet corner and imagine you're living in the year 500 BCE. And it's especially quiet on an August evening when it's over 100 degrees at sunset. Now I know what Neil Diamond was talking about when he cut that album Hot August Nights at the Greek, because it is. Although there have been communities on this spot as far back as the Neolithic period more than 5,000 years ago, what we know is Greek culture began developing in the Mycenaean period, about 1100 BCE. About 500 years later, this public gathering place, the Agora, was built by Pericles following the defeat of the Persians. All that history is represented by several fantastic examples of historic buildings, most notably this one, the Temple of Hephaestus. By Grecian archeological standards, this is by no means the most grand of temples, but it is one of the best preserved examples of architecture from the Greek world that is in existence. And this one right here, the Temple of Hathestos, is dedicated to the patron of metal workers and also to the patron of um, craftspeople in general. So you can see, we all know that the Greeks valued their artisans, but here is a real tangible example of that. This is one of the most beautiful pieces of architecture I've ever seen, and it's so well preserved, you can almost hear the history coming out of those walls when you're standing there. It's really amazing. It's only fitting that a civilization so remembered for beautiful art and architecture would be represented by this nearly perfectly preserved ruin. There are other well-preserved buildings to explore inside and out, like the 10th century Church of the Holy Apostles. It's easy to lose yourself in time when you explore a place like this Byzantine church, dedicated to the Apostle Paul. He spent time here in the Agora, facing his doubting hosts, who challenged him with Socratic questioning about his teachings of Jesus' message. As I walked away from the church, I thought about what's changed since the days that Paul attempted to sway the Stoics, and maybe it isn't that much. It is strange to think in the world we live that in ancient Greece, women were not allowed in the Agora. Except for a couple times a year, I've read for special festivals and holidays, the women were excited, especially the young women, to uh, dress up and socialize and get together with other women in the community, which is something that they were generally not allowed to do. But what's really food for thought is, as strange as that sounds, we're just kind of coming out of that sort of thinking ourselves as a civilization here in the 21st century. The 
ancient Stoa of Atilos has been restored to house a nice museum that interprets much of the story of the Agora. It was the perfect place to wrap up my visit. Some of these spaces are so lifelike, they look like they were carved last week. It's literally coming face to face with history. I walked off into the warm Athens night with plenty to think and talk about over dinner. When you consider everything that the Agora was and meant to the Athenians as a culture and as a people, I'd have to say this might be the number one spot to visit if you come to Athens, just because the history here in the atmosphere, you can really soak it up. I mean, the Acropolis is great, but the ancient Agora is where you really feel the history.